Great, so now we're going to have Hannah come and um, share first for us. So I'm going to quickly pray for Hannah. Jesus, thank you for the many stories that have happened within our church and across our sites over the last year. Pray for Hannah and Craig as they continue to lead this ship or ships, this fleet. <laughs> um, pray for her as she shares vision with us this morning. We'd, we have open hearts, heart, eyes and ears to hear it. In your mighty name, King Jesus, amen. There we go. <laughs> I'm not on the, t the uh, production or technology team, can you tell? <laughs> well, a huge welcome again. My name's Hannah, I'm married to Craig. Um, and it's my absolute joy this morning um, to, together with Mark, we're going to be sharing some vision uh, for the year ahead. Gateway Vineyard um, is one church in different locations. Together we are extending God's kingdom everywhere and in every way as the Lord leads. He's called us to be a growing church, a worshipping community of people learning what it means to follow Jesus, passionate about sharing the good news of Jesus and showing God's love and kindness to those around us. And the journey that he's had us on means that we're now not just gathering in one location, but we're meeting in three locations. And over the last 16, 17 years, we've gone from nine people in a living room to 350, 400, whatever it is now, gathering in three locations. And it's been quite the adventure, lots of twists and turns, um, but we've been doing it together and God has been incredibly faithful to us. Gateway Central, Gateway at the Chapel, and we've been laying the foundations for Gateway Beckles. Two years ago, we gathered together and we shared about how God had been speaking to us about multiplication. In a human sense, the timing was really bad. We were coming out of COVID, um, there were many challenges, and it just, it didn't feel like we were ready. <laughs> you know, kingdom growth is both exciting and costly, and it rarely comes when we feel ready. Jesus modeled this for us in his life and in his ministry. He says to us in John 12, verse 24 to 26, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Ultimately, here he's talking to us about his life and his death, the ultimate sacrifice to conquer the power of death and sin once and for all making way for us to have relationship with him both now and in the age to come. But there's also something here for us to grasp about the very nature of kingdom multiplication. Jesus could have stayed on the earth and he could have traveled place to place, healing and setting people free, bringing hope, restoring lives. And that's what we read about, Matthew, 20, uh, Matthew 9, verse 35. It says, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, healing every disease. That's what he did. But Jesus was all about training other people to do what he did. His model of kingdom multiplication was never to do it alone, but to train others so that more people could also be involved in participating, extending the kingdom of God together everywhere in every way. And so he trained the 12 disciples, Matthew 10, verse uh, 7 to 8, verse 1. Jesus called the disciples. To him gave him authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and illness. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal all those who are ill. Raise the dead. Cleanse those who have leprosy. Drive out demons. Freely you've received. Freely give. So you can see their instruction. Do everything that I've taught you to do. Advance the kingdom of God. Everywhere and every way. All that I've given to you, give away. You get to give. Everything that Jesus has given you, share with others. And the more you give, the more you get. It's the kingdom principle and it defined the early church. And that's how the kingdom of God advances. So Jesus does it. He trains the 12, releases the 12, and then he sends the 72, Luke 10. Uh, after this, the Lord appointed 72 others, and he sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. 
He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. Heal those who are ill and tell them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. And then we find in Matthew 28, his final command to his disciples, verse 18 to 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to do, obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you to the very end of the age. And that's how we came to be here. Together, the kingdom of God is advancing. We get to do this together, and it's wonderful to have these occasions, to come together, to worship together, to share stories of God's faithfulness, to have coffee and eat together, to pray for one another, to encourage each other. But then we're sent. We go back to our locations uh, where, we, where we are based in our local sites. We go back to our homes. We go back to our workplaces. We go back to the social spaces, all the places that God has placed us and called us to be. We are a family on mission. We are a sent people. Extending God's kingdom together everywhere and every way as the Lord leads. We could have said no. <laughs> we could have said no to this journey. We could have said, we like Mark and Katie and some of the guys that were at Central that went across with them to help plant and start that new site. We really like the guys in Beckles. We'd much prefer it if they were just here with us every week. It's so much nicer to be in the room together and to see their lovely faces. It's more comfortable um, and no thank you. But then we would have missed out on this great adventure of multiplication we would have missed out on the joy of seeing so many more people um, finding a place to belong and to be, to find community. We would have missed the adventure of faith and of stretch and of stepping into what God wants us to do. We would have missed the adventure of seeing more people coming to Alpha and coming into that space to find out more about who Jesus is. We would have missed the adventure of actually more people having opportunities to step up and use their gifts and get involved. We would have missed so much if we had said, no, we're quite happy as we are, thank you very much. The adventure that we are on is one of saying yes to Jesus. Getting out of the boat, trusting in him, even when sometimes it doesn't make sense, so that our yes can be multiplied and so much more can happen because of who he is rather than who we are. It's an adventure of kingdom multiplication. It costs us something, but it's so much more exciting to see what God can do when we say yes, then just stay as we are. And so this morning, we're going to share some vision and some priorities uh, for the year ahead. It's not everything that we're doing. Um, we have, we, there's so much going on. And so if we don't mention something, it's not that that isn't also important. There's just a few things that we want to share that we feel that we want to lean into in the coming year. And so I'm going to start, and then I'm going to invite Mark up to come and sit <laughs> um, and we're going to tag team a little bit for the rest of this morning. So I'm going to start and I'm going to start by just talking about our priority to continue raising the next generation. At Gateway, uh, children and young people have always been a really big priority for us and as a team they've identified some priorities for the year ahead. I'm just going to share them. You know, currently we have um, well over eight, we count, I was told 82, we have 82 children registered to Planet Kids, but we know that there are more children than that coming across the three locations to our Planet Kids program. So that doesn't include those that are kind of uh, naught to one, the babies um, and the little ones. In addition to that, we have 40 young people that currently regularly come on Sunday mornings um, and to Friday nights. And as has already been mentioned, 18 of them are with six of our youth team leaders up at Trent Vineyard this morning um, for the DTI road trip. We've probably had more sleep than they have, but I hear they're having a great time. It's a huge privilege and one of our key priorities this year to build a strong foundation of discipleship 
for our children and young people, equipping and nurturing our children and young people to have their own relationship with Jesus and to discover and use the gifts that God has given them. And so this year we've been focusing on this through teaching on areas like prayer and how to pray, as well as using chat and catch on a regular basis, tools that enable them to talk with Jesus and learn to listen to him for themselves. We have and we will be looking at spiritual gifts, identifying and growing in who as God has made them to be and how he shaped them and how they can discover more of their God-given purpose. One of my favorite stories that has um, been shared in the last year from uh, the parents of a, a relatively new family um, was they said this, they said, my kids used to know about God, but now they know him. And I think that really sums up so much of our heart for our kids and our young people. On Sunday mornings in youth, we've been developing what we've been calling our encounter space, creating opportunities every week for young people to engage with the Holy Spirit and what we're teaching um, and helping them to connect with him and to develop those skills to do that. Young people are regularly inviting their friends on Friday nights to youth sessions, and we've been really excited how open um, some of them have been just wanting friendship with Jesus and how we have that opportunity just to kind of really um, tell them about Jesus and help them start that friendship. As well as youth inviting their friends, another one of my favorite stories from this last year was of the boy that turned up at church bringing his parents with him because he really wanted to go to church. They didn't have a church background particularly but he was there wanting to be there so they brought him isn't that wonderful we are hoping to start uh, like well we're planning to start life uh, groups for youth youth life groups after easter that's the plan to create a space where young people can go deeper so as well as friday nights as well as sunday mornings creating those life groups where they can go that little bit deeper and then alongside the key stage two group that we're doing for girls we want to do the equivalent for boys and if that's something that you're interested in we'd love to hear from you another priority for this year is to um, look at how we help families um, and kids that connect with many of the different things we do through the year that we know trickets our tree, Easter events, all of those things, pathways and ways that they can then engage in other things that we're doing as a church, um, whether it be in Beckles, at the chapel or here, so that there's clear pathways for children and families to come into church family. And we want to continue to support parents in raising their kids with faith. Last year, a priority for us with 0 to 18s this year is to develop the team uh, that supports children and young people with additional needs. The Supernovas team makes a massive difference to individual children and families. And if you would like to find out more, we'd love to tell you more about the ways that you can support our kids and our youth ministry. But particularly, um, if you're interested in Supernovas, then we would love to give you more information about that. Mark. I should explain, just so it saves a billion conversations, I tore my Achilles playing squash. Um, so when they tell you exercise is good for you, it has risks. Um, so that's why I'm wearing this uh, good looking boot. So I just want to share about our vision for worshipping communities um, as one of our, our five key priorities. Um, and the last few years has seen us step into um, a calling and a sense of calling that we felt God um, give us as a church. So a passage that kept coming up for a number of years was Isaiah 54 verse 2, um, where it says, Enlarge the place of your tent, stretch your tent curtains wide, do not hold back lengthen your cords, strengthen stakes. And our sense as we discern that was the invitation into multi-site, into growing, and it's come at a number of different points through um, the years. And so we've been faithfully taking steps um, to do that in the form of launching new worshiping communities um, in, the, in Norwich and in wider afield in Beckles as well. So that idea of one church meeting in different locations on a mission to extend God's kingdom everywhere in every way. 
And so the chapel site, hopefully there's a slide with um, some photos to give you context if you've not uh, managed to make it along. We're about 18 months in to the journey since Katie and I were commissioned um, to launch the chapel site with a, a small team here from Central um, who committed to relocate um, to the chapel kind of every week and obediently follow God's call um, to take on the church community um, that was handed over to us there. And it's been, we've been blown away by what God did in the lead up to that and what he's done since um, in seeing that. And we're well underway in the transition process that we um, had talked about. Seeing God at work um, strengthen people's faith um, and for the first time people coming to faith, um, others growing in their discipleship journeys, um, gifts being discovered and activated and put to use, connections with the local community growing through um, care homes, schools, our neighbours. Um, and we want to bless that locality and um, beyond and build on the legacy of what we inherited. The physical location of the chapel has also created so many opportunities for the wider church um, to gather for training, equipping, prayer, worship, groups for all ages. And this has been such a blessing to strengthen and bless the whole of Gateway Vineyard Church. And this year, we're praying to see and know more of God in our worship, in our discipleship, and a sense of community across all ages and stages of life. And for that to overflow into our local community that we're planted in, um, in the north of Norwich. In Beckles, it's been great to see what God's doing with that community um, and in the Beckles and Waveney area. And we've seen momentum building as the focus has been to strengthen the foundations for what God is going to build. So there's been a real focus on gathering a core group of people who are committed to the vision and the call that God has on the area and committing to pray um, for that area. It's really the engine room of what's going on um, at Beckles um, from there. But there's also been an intentional push forward to do more publicly in the Beckles and Waveney area and establishing a pattern of gathering on Sundays throughout the month in different creative ways. So one Sunday a month, the community gathers um, at Wellingham Primary School to welcome people to join together, um, have coffee, they stream in the worship and the teaching here from Central, have a Planet Kids ministry and a chance to pray and respond in ministry together. Another Sunday each month, people are encouraged to make the journey into Norwich and come along here to Central Site. On another Sunday in the month, they gather in the evening for their encounter nights with creative worship um, and prayer. And then they're tr starting to try new creative things um, to gather um, together. I saw recently they were gathering in Costa on a Sunday morning um, in public spaces. That's great. And there's real creativity um, growing um, there. But there's also been opportunities to invite the local community in that area to come and get to know um, the people through things like No Trick and Christmas, and there's an Easter event um, coming up too. And so it's just great to see what God is doing in that area. But the specific prayer and where you can join um, the team who are part of Beckles is that this year they're praying for 20 new people um, to commit to joining that community and specifically praying for a worship leader um, to, to come and to join in that community to help um, do all that God is wanting to do in that area for the next steps um, of what he's building there. And so we come to Central. Um, it's been home for many of us um, for a, a number of years. And it's a moment to reflect, to celebrate, and to give thanks for all that God's been doing across the whole life of the church. To celebrate sending a team of us um, to launch the chapel, supporting Beckles um, over, the next, over the last year and going forward as they take their next steps. It's a time to welcome new faces, um, to continue strengthening and to rebuilding after all the disruption that we've been through um, with COVID and other things um, since. And I love coming back here when I'm speaking and meeting new people um, who've been around for a while, just didn't know them. Um, and it's a joy um, to see um, new faces and people taking their place and getting involved um, in different ways. The truth is we anticipated some of the costs of launching these new sites. Some of them were obvious, um, but some of them have been, were less obvious. We didn't anticipate them quite so much. And there is a cost of growing, of multiplying, of stepping into becoming a multi-site church, releasing people to go and to take leadership roles in those spaces. Um, and some of that can be a discomfort. And we know for a number of you, you've felt that. You've not seen some of your, your friends and your people in the way that you were used to and familiar with. Maybe things changed and you weren't sure about those changes initially um, because you quite liked how it was um, before. That's, that's totally normal. Any change is um, challenging. And it can be challenging to stay while others go and do something new. 
there's excitement in the doing there's something new but but staying in in the place um, where things stay pretty similar um, can be um, a challenge as well from there but I want you to be encouraged um, here at Central Site that actually what you've done in releasing people and supporting um, these other worshipping communities is part of um, a blessing for you guys too that you're part of something beyond what you can see on a Sunday morning and it's incredible we can't share all the stories um, but there's a mul the multiplication is happening what we read in scripture is happening in practice um, and that's something to um, to celebrate and so this has been a season of strengthening here at Central and really asking the question like, what is next in the adventure? That's a pretty exciting question to ask. And as Hannah said, this started 16, 17 years ago with nine people in a living room. And look at what the Lord has been doing, just faithfully, step by step. You'd never have imagined it um, if you could. And one of the, as I was preparing, the verse that came to mind was Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power, not ours, that's a work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. That's our prayer for what's going on here at Gateway, that the glory is God's, the power is through him, and that he will do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. So I'm excited for this next year, seeing what God is going to do in and through this community as we continue to step into the vision to extend God's kingdom everywhere in every way together. Over to you, Hannah. I'm just going to talk about making disciples. Every single one of you, from the youngest to the oldest, is completely uniquely made by God with his divine fingerprints all over your life. Unique personalities, unique gifts, unique passions, uniquely made to reflect Jesus. It says in Ephesians 2, verse 10, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Growing as disciples is about our apprenticeship to Jesus. It's about learning what it means to follow him and doing that together. It's about living with purpose and discover, discovering a greater sense of thriving. And it's been a real priority for us to invest in the last couple of years in our emotional and spiritual health. And a lot's been done um, and led by Sarah, Avi, and other people within the pastoral team to support this. It's why we've really um, focused on things like the Emotionally Healthy Spirituality course and various other things that have created spaces for us to really look at what it means for us to grow with Jesus. So we don't want to just grow numerically, but we want to be growing spiritually uh, together. And so in this next year, here's a few things in the area of making disciples we really want to focus on. Firstly, multiplication of prayer. This probably isn't going to be a surprise. We started the year in prayer together, but we want to continue the year in prayer together. It's the engine room of the church, and we want to continue to encourage you to find ways to pray uh, individually and together in groups. And we're going to be looking for your feedback on this and how we can do this better. There's going to be a survey coming out that's going to get your thoughts on prayer. What would help you to be able to develop your prayer life and any ideas you have about how we can do this increasingly together. So we want to continue to make room for Jesus in every way possible and prioritize prayer. So that's number one. Secondly, gift activation. Like I said, all of us are made uniquely with gifts and skills, and we want to really encourage you to discover more of who God's made you to be and create different opportunities for you to use the gifts that God has given you through serving, through your life groups, uh, through training, and we want to encourage you to use the gifts that God has been placing within you. And we're going to have some specific training opportunities. We've already started. We just had Emmanuel prayer training. We're going to be having some specific prophecy training come up. Got a, a call tomorrow with someone about them uh, coming up to lead a growing in the prophetic day for us, which we're uh, really hopeful we can do before the summer. There's other things that are planned, things that we hope will encourage you in the gifts that you have. We're doing it with our kids and, and young people as well. The third thing is pastoral team development and equipping. 
And so there is a, a team of people that support the leaders of the church around this whole area of emotional and spiritual health. And they're planning some courses like Freedom in Christ and things that um, will really help lead um, us deeper into places of freedom and healing and wholeness, which we believe God wants for every single one of us. Last Easter, um, many of us um, went in April, just after Easter, to the Vineyard Leaders Gathering. Um, one of our leaders, Naomi, came with us. Um, and I don't, I'm just going to share a little bit of her story. I'm not going to go into loads of it, but with her permission. So Naomi, for as long as she can remember, has had nightmares. Um, so she can't remember a time when she didn't have them. And when I say nightmares, between one and five a night... Um, between 2020 and April 2023, she can only remember one night when she didn't have a nightmare. And they go back to when she was very little. She thinks probably four. She'd been to Papworth, sleep trials, various types of therapy, all kinds of medication, and nothing had changed that for her and stopped it. Until the leaders' gathering last year in April. When she came, she received prayer and received some healing and some freedom. And since that time last year, she's not had one nightmare ever since. It's, it's been the most wonderful, wonderful journey of freedom and healing, but it didn't stop there. So Naomi started telling her story and other people started saying, well, actually, I know somebody who needs some healing or freedom. And some of us were like, well, I think maybe, Naomi, you could pray for us, <laughs> for this, for that. And so it started a chain reaction of people seeking prayer and other people getting healed and free. And you know when you start to think, the Lord's doing something here. I think he's doing something here. So at that time, Vineyard released one of their theology modules on healing and deliverance. And we were like, oh, I think we should do that. Well, 13 of us decided we would do that module together. And we started off uh, meeting on Zoom to discuss it. And it was just impossible. We had to get in the room together. And again, God just started to bring healing and freedom. And we've just been on this journey of seeing him doing more and more and more and more. And so one of our priorities for this year is to really be um, wanting to see God do all the healing and all the freedom in our church community that he wants to bring and to be as skilled and equipped to do it with him as we possibly can. So that's a priority for this year. The fourth thing is life group multiplication. We are a church of smaller groups. We are a site. We are sites with smaller groups within them. We serve on teams, but primarily the place of community is in our life groups. That's a place of belonging where we can really get to know each other. It's a place where we can build relationships. We can um, have a go with gifts and leading and various things. And the, in short, what we want to do is launch more groups. We want to launch more groups that will be um, good environments for training people and for raising leaders and for fostering community. So there's four things in the whole area of making disciples that we really want to focus on this year. Amazing. Um, so our next focus is the outward focused um, church. And so as Hannah said, you know, an intentional decision is to be inwardly strong, work on our discipleship, but we're inwardly strong so that we can be outwardly um, focused. And just as Jesus sent the 12 and the 72, as Hannah mentioned, we've been sent um, on a mission to share good news in our communities, in our city, in our communities um, as well. So different ways that we do this, again, we can't touch on all of them, um, but just a couple of highlights. So Alpha is a course where people can explore um, Christianity, and we've been growing and increasing the frequency and the number of Alpha groups um, that we've run as a church from historically sort of once a year, um, sort of on an ad hoc kind of basis, but we're now running regularly. Um, we're running consecutively in terms and running simultaneous groups at the same time in different locations. So at the minute um, we're running two groups, Beckles are about to start, um, and Alpha as well. 
world, which is really exciting. Um, we normally try and gather together for our Holy Spirit days um, together. But it's been wonderful to see guests come on, come to faith, now wanting to be baptized, but also inviting other friends to come too. Our current cohort, um, there's people buzzing. They're like, I'm loving this. And I've got another couple of friends that I want to invite to the next one um, that's coming. So as we build that, that rhythm, as more and more of the church have been through Alpha, have brought a guest on Alpha, then we see the, a growth in the, in the invitation um, for people to ask their questions, to explore that um, together. And I love doing Alpha. I've lost count now of how many courses I've done, um, but every time I learn um, something new. So if you've never been on an Alpha team, then I encourage you to sign up next time, uh, bring a friend um, with you as well. Touched on baptisms. We've got baptisms here on, on Easter Sunday. Um, on March 17th, before that, we've got four people getting baptized um, at chapel. There's another couple of people who can't make those dates and we'll be looking um, for later on in the year. That's exciting. We gathered 10 people who are interested in baptism and nine out of the 10 have come through Alpha at some point or another. Um, that's the reality of lives transformed, saying yes to Jesus to the point of saying, I want to declare that publicly in front of my friends, my family, my colleagues, um, to show my commitment, my inward decision in an outward expression um, through baptism. So we can't wait to celebrate over the coming weeks of people getting baptized um, across um, locations. Another way we've been stepping out into um, outward focused ministry is through some of the roles that we've been able to appoint as part of our church um, staff team. Much of that has been funded through grants and through some of your um, generous giving as well. So um, Sarah Housen is employed as our older people's worker. Um, we co-partner with another charity in funding that role. And she's um, leading a team of volunteers that are serving the older people in our city, um, trying to reach out, share the gospel, um, break down isolation, bring people together. Um, and equip them um, as well. And so she's doing that through individual visiting, um, through running groups, and through linking with care homes um, and serving in those places and bringing life and light into places that can be quite dark and feel quite lonely and isolated. Another area is Grow Kids, a ministry that we've been running for a number of years, um, and it got to the point where we knew we needed to invest in some, um, some time um, for people to be able to commit to that. And so we're thrilled at your generosity and partnering with a charity that gave us a grant to be able to employ Manuela, who's taken on the coordinator role from Kate, um, and Joe, who's doing some of the admin um, for Grow Kids, um, with a view of growing, of multiplying. And so we've got plans of launching a Grow Baby for 0 to Fives at the chapel um, this year, increasing increasing capacity um, at our trial space um, as well, looking to serve families practically, but also spiritually and emotionally. Um, and if you've not been along to Grow Kids or you don't know much about it, find out from the team. Um, there's loads of different ways you can serve, from washing clothes to sorting out donations um, to serving families on their sessions as well. So do get involved and find out how you can pray, how you can get involved in um, joining the team and donating as well. Check out their social media for more info. Another way we're doing that is through Hope Interaction. It's another charity that we partner with. Um, and uh, Danny, who's part of the church, um, is our link and works for them as well. And so we've had a house with Hope Interaction for years. It supports people who have experienced homelessness um, or may have come out of prison or different challenges. They come into the house for a number of years. And as a church, we partner to bring friendship and support, practically, emotionally, um, to walk alongside people into independence and independent living. Um, so we're thrilled that this year we're going to be experiencing expanding to have a second house that we're supporting that's going to be focused on families um, as well as the house for, um, for single men. And that's just such a gift to be able to journey with um, these people um, through a challenging time of life um, and a practical way that we as a church um, can do that. So again, if you want to know more about that, Danny's right at the back um, and uh, she'll, she's waving now, but none of you can see it. But just ask someone to point out Danny. She can chat to you about the ways that you could be involved practically um, or through mentoring and supporting. I also want to mention our mission partners, Stu, Abby, Chip, and Jono in Southeast Asia, Joy in Kenya. They're a part of our church family. They're outward focused. Um, they are out there in another continent, two other continents, um, sharing the good news of Jesus. But they're part of our community. We get to be part of that. And we support them, um, whether financially, a number of you um, give to, to help them and support them um, in their living costs over there. But also through prayer, um, there's a real commitment to be praying for them. And they value your encouragement. Um, the notes that get sent to them, the emails, and the checking in um, on them as well. And so we get to partner in something that's happening far 
far beyond our shores, um, but is bringing life um, to um, all sorts of people um, out there. So that's an amazing um, way. So there's loads of other ministries. There's polos, there's sanctuary, there's cameo, there's kids and babies matter, um, cap money. All these things are bringing life. The outward focus, serving our city, serving our community. Um, and the most exciting thing, however, I think, is individual stories of you stepping out in faith. You putting your faith in action acts of generosity, acts of kindness, words of encouragement, uh, where people are being bold and sharing their faith at work. They, for me, are the most exciting because what Jesus didn't call us to do is set up um, national kind of government organizations or anything to go out into the world. For some people, that's what you're called to. But what he actually asked to do is said, go, each and every one of you, go into all of the earth. Tell the good news, make disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so each of us is on mission. And when each of us takes our part in that and activates that, the whole of our city can be transformed. This isn't about one or two people leading a particular ministry. This is about the entire church body. And so I can't wait to see what else um, starts to happen in 2024 um, in our outward focus mission um, from there. And lastly, le launching leaders. A healthy growing church has healthy growing leaders. Leadership at Gateway, is, at Gateway is as we see in the model of Jesus, it's primarily about serving other people. And we need leaders in every area of church life, kids, youth, worship, trustees, life group leaders, and so on. And there's gonna be leadership development opportunities this year, this year but it all starts with saying yes, more often than not, our leadership journey always involves just getting stuck in and serving somewhere. Leadership comes in different shapes and sizes. For some of us, it might be a small group of people. For others, it might be a particular area of ministry, and we want you to be able to explore that. I'm going to invite Jodie just to come. Um, we're going to be landing this really soon. Um, there was always a risk this morning that uh, we would be running over slightly, so I do apologize, and the kids are very happy and safe and having lots of fun. Jodie, why don't you just start by um, sharing why do you think Leadership Essentials, which we run here at Gateway, uh, both in Central and over at Beckles, why is Leadership Essentials so good for leadership development? Okay, um, so for me, leadership is all around, all about us influencing others. And so for many of you, you may feel like well, I'm not a natural leader, but I strongly feel like for many of us, actually, we, we can influence the people that we're with on an everyday basis. And so um, Leadership Essentials is a great place where once a month we meet and we will talk about um, various things. We have teaching around communication, teamwork, building teams, having difficult conversations. Um, but the key is that we're doing it through the lens of Jesus and a Christian perspective. So if you're leading within a workplace or leading in a church setting or a, don't feel like you're actually leading yet, it's a really great place to just build some skills and see how Jesus in his servant leadership um, is our role model and we can apply that wherever we are. So we currently have five people doing Vineyard Leadership College, which is a commitment to doing a day a week. Uh, once a month, the group from Gateway go up to Trent and take part with a wider group. And there's also retreats and training uh, during the uh, year. And so I just want to ask you, Jodie, what difference has doing Leadership College made? I could get really emotional about this. Um, it, it was, um, it kind of landed on me and God really pointed me in the direction of doing Leadership College and, and the process itself was God was really at work. Um, and I had an expectation that Leadership College would be about um, teaching me lots of stuff, which I have, you know, I've learned in a, in a context, a work context before. Um, but actually it's far deeper, like really deep. Um, he has shown me through the first term at least around who I am, um, about what he's placed, the passions he's placed in me, um, and that my calling is actually really unique. I've always thought, oh, you know, the things that I feel passionate about, surely everyone feels passionate about, but actually he's given me gifts and it is growing my confidence, like just exponentially in terms of knowing what God's placed in me and the gifts he's placed in me and just has given me a passion to kind of help others to identify the gifts that they've got in them um, to just build his kingdom and share it with others. It has been absolutely life-changing and I would recommend it um, to anyone. I really would. 
If you want to know more about Leadership Essentials, Leadership College, then do head to the welcome desk and we'll get that information. And over the next few weeks, other people from Leadership College will also be sharing. And there'll be an opportunity if you want to find out more about starting in September, how you can get involved. Jody, thank you. We want to grow the number of uh, life group leaders within the church as well. Um, and we also just want to keep growing that culture of raising leaders. So how can we respond this morning? Mark's already mentioned Isaiah 54. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch wide, uh, stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. Well, we have stretched wide. And now we feel that the time has come to strengthen and to focus on strengthening the stakes. And so we really want to encourage you uh, to play your part in strengthening the stakes now that we've stretched wide. And so we've uh, hopefully on the way in this morning, you will have been given an envelope that looks like this. If you haven't, just pop up your hand and we'll just get one to you. And you can now open that. So if someone from the welcome team could just pop round. And there's also loads of pens at the back. You might need pens. It's going to get interactive. Um, so at the back, um, there's loads of pens that will come forward. Keep your hand up until someone comes uh, with one. So in your pack, you've got some different things in there. Okay. One of the things that you've got in there is this vision card. Okay, and on the front, it's got the five things we've talked about. Now, I just want to really encourage you, go home, stick it on your fridge or somewhere visible, in your toilet, somewhere where you frequent regularly. Um, and just when you see it, pray, okay? Pray for the church, pray for these things for this year. You'll see on the back that we're inviting you to join us. And the number one thing on there is to pray. We're encouraging you to actively engage um, through prayer, okay? So we want to increase prayer. First thing you can do is pray. And we've just put on the individually and by gathering with others, keep it real, keep it simple, keep it up. Let's keep up with our prayers. Secondly, the th one thing that you could do is to pledge. Everything that we do has a cost. And all of it is possible because of people's generous, uh, generous giving and sacrificial giving. At this particular moment, Everything that comes into the church financially is going out. And so we would really like to increase the resources that we have available in order that we can do more of the things that we're talking about in this next year. And we're currently preparing for the new financial year start in April. And I'll be working with Alan um, and the trustee team and to look and see what can we do. And so we just want to encourage you to consider if, if this is your church family and you're not currently giving, would you pray and consider doing that? Or maybe you have been giving, but you haven't thought about reviewing it for some time. Maybe this would be a moment that you could do that. It might be that you're in a position that you want to give a, a one-off gift. All of your giving makes a massive difference. It doesn't matter on the amount. This is about what we can all bring to this to strengthen. And it will really make a difference to this upcoming year. And so in your envelope, there's a pledge form um, where you can pledge to give or to start giving. And then the third thing is to participate, to get involved, to take your place. And you'll find a lovely join a team, come make a difference card in there. Now, some of you are on a team in your local site and you love the team you're part of. Um, and you don't want to you know, join a new team and that's completely fine. Others of us, maybe we, we want to find out about a new team or we're not currently involved. And you could use your gifts uh, to come and encourage and build the church up in a particular area. And so you've got one of these in there. Now, in a moment, we're going to pass um, some uh, buckets round. Um, and there's one more thing in your envelope, and that's a contact card. Now, some of you have moved home and you haven't told us. Um, some of you have never like, given us your contact details and stuff. And you, if you would like to do that today, you can update details. You can also say, I'm interested in Alpha, which Mark was talking about. You could say, I'm interested in finding out more about dot, dot, dot. That's all on the contact card in here. And as we pass these buckets around, you can stick in your contact cards. You can put in team cards. You can put in pledge cards. Some of us need to go away and pray and talk and think about how we respond. Some of us have been thinking about this for a while. And this is a moment to respond. And you could fill this out now. You could fill out the pledge card. You could fill out the team card. You could fill out your contact card, whatever it is. And you can stick it in the bucket as it comes around. Now, in the interest of recycling, if you have a team and you're on a team and you love your team and you don't need the team card, can you stick that in there as well? Because we will gather them up and reuse them. So in a few moments, we're going to pass the buckets around. The worship team are going to come back. But I'm just going to end by saying one thing. 
one other thing. Um, we are really expectant for what God wants to do on this next leg of our adventure. And we would love you to find a place uh, within it and do it with us. In the feeding of the 5,000, the boy brings his pack lunch. He brings his loaves and his fish and he puts it into Jesus' hands. And it was all he had. But in Jesus' hands, so much more than you could have asked or imagined happened. And many people were fed that day. And all we're inviting you to again this year, 2024, is to bring your loaves and fish, to bring the little that you have, to place it into Jesus' hands and to join us on this journey. And let's together see what he'll do this year. Amen. Why don't we um, invite the band up? And we're going to just respond in this way. We're going to pass these buckets around. If you want to uh, pledge, if you want to... Um, do that this morning, just place contact cards, team cards, pledge cards into the, but you'll also be able to hand them in over the next few weeks, of course. Um, and we're just gonna worship as we do that. If you need pens, there's loads at the back. If you can um, just wander around, Vic, if you need a pen, just place your hand up and the team will come um, and pass them to you as well. And we're gonna worship and we're gonna do this together. <laughs>